Welcome back to the channel. Always great to see you. Always great to record a video for you guys. And it's always great to do what we do. So glad you're here. Before we start today's video though, I'm gonna ask you to please hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button, the notification button, and of course, I'm always gonna invite you to join the channel. If you could please join the channel, I greatly appreciate it. It only helps me out. With that, we're gonna talk about a distribution that is Ubuntu based uh, or Debian based actually. I think they started off being Ubuntu and then wound up migrating to Debian, but they uh, created their own, uh, own spin of it and they actually deal with being in a Linux business field. That's right, it is a Linux operating system for business environment and it's known as Linspire. But we're not talking exactly about Linspire. We're talking about its offspring known as Freespire. It's what you can use on your home desktop environment and have a lot of the greatness that is Linspire that is a little bit reduced in its capabilities, but not entirely too much. So that is the wonderful thing. And it still remains open source, even though uh, it still lends to having a lot of support for some Microsoft things. They're really one of the first Linux distributions that has come along and melded uh, the business world because let's face it, in, in today's business computing environment, Windows is definitely dominated or has dominated that game. And for Linux to break into it, it's going to have to meet some of that. And that's what the uh, Linspire and Freespire well, not Freespire, but Linspire aspires to do and has done. It is uh, actually owned and created by PC Open Systems LLC. And they are really knocking it down and staying stable and doing well with it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. First off, we're going to take a look at Linspire and see really what they're about. Linspire is a Linux based OS, which is based off of uh, Ubuntu that is uh, geared towards business, education and government workers. So you'll find this in a lot of professional environments. It has all the application business users need for work, research, deployment, or yeah, deployment among very high end desktop systems. With Linspire, you can host the entire line of legacy applications that may still be in use in your environment as well as facilitate facilities or deploying web apps. Linspire is certified in many states to run government intranet and web-based applications. Linspire is only Debian and Ubuntu based system that is certified by Oracle and IBM to host and deploy their respective cloud technologies. Linspire is deployed by four out of five U.S. military branches and is still used by NOAA today. So those are some pretty steep credentials and pretty auspicious ones to, to actually maintain and keep up with. So that being said, Linspire comes with only office. It comes with your web browser, the email client, the music, the video player, GIMP, font manager, Inkscape, Nitro share, Synergy, built-in antivirus, integrate, which um, I don't know which antivirus it uses, integrated virtual machine software already out the box. So it's either got uh, either vert manager installed. It may have uh uh, virtual box or maybe gnome boxes because it is ubuntu based so it could have that it's got integrated uh and it uses the gnome desktop environment uh it's integrated virtual machine or sorry wine is in there to be able to run windows apps uh the dot net core supports there microsoft sql server for linux is there the ice ssb web app creator is there and it's got full zfs xfs and eufi support so that is what linspire does now Freespire, which you'll find here in the tab right here, you click on it, you go here, of course, you know, they're a corporation, they're an LLC, so they need funding because they, being in a corporate world, get hit with corporate sized bills and those are not cheap. So uh, obviously, you know, they're going to ask for donations and so, you know, there, but it is actually free. You can go over here to the downloads right here and you go right here and you can download right here. Uh, the free spire nine so that is how you get to that now we'll go back here real quick like and we'll look at 
the what Freespire comes with. It comes with GNOME 42.5, Thunderbird 102, Firefox, only Office, the GNOME videos, the Rhythm Box, the GNOME apps, which are the maps, clocks, calculator, weather. It comes with Belena Etcher and Bash Top replaces H Top. So they, and there's a couple screenshots right here of it. We'll dive into it and take a look at it. But so, like I said, they've trimmed it down a little bit versus the, the actual corporate edition. So let's go ahead and dive into it and take a look at it. And here we are. I know I'm getting ready to log in, so we'll type into my secret password to log in. Why are we not logging in? Oh, we are logging in. Okay. This is definitely the GNOME 42 environment. If you look over here, you can see it's not the nice, beautiful, squashed GNOME, you know, power tray. Uh, but anyhow, uh, this is the GNOME environment. And of course, there's your activities button here to get to your different four different virtual desktops that are available. Uh, you have your side panel here. We'll click on this one to be at this one. You have your side panels right here, which has got your only office. You got your terminal, GNOME terminal rhythm box, your GNOME files, which is your standard file manager for GNOME uh, desktop environment. It's what's kind of cool is it's set to dark theme already out of the box, as I can see. It's just your typical, you know, you hit your control H and all your, uh, hidden dot files show up. So uh, it's, once you've seen one, you've seen them all for desktop managers as far as they're concerned. Now, uh, over here is your activities where you can get to see what your, what your applications are. But as you can see, they've also got over here, uh, the arc menu, I believe, right here. So enable, so that means that they have, and they've got places right here. So that leads me to believe that they have, if we go here and look, they probably got extensions enabled right here. Here's extensions right here. So they did employ extensions already out of the box. So it is pretty much so customized for you, set up to a minimal degree, uh, a very professional looking degree. I mean, it is definitely uh, professionally set up if you look at it. Um, there is not a lot of bloatware in here whatsoever. What I find interesting is they have the Discover Store for applications. So they brought in Discover to bring in like the Caden, the Plasma Suite, like you can do Plasma add-ons. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's kind of wild that they that they've included that. So that I think is kind of trippy. That they've done that but you know hey i've seen wilder things too uh they have and you know let's look at a few apps here that are that are important to mention they've got gedit they've got balena etcher which is really nice i don't know if you guys have used this before or not but this is a imaging tool to write isos or image files to uh usbs to make them bootable uh it is cross-platform i believe you can use it on you find it on windows mac and linux I like it. I use it um, a lot. Uh, used to only use it, but I've come to like um, the uh, image writer tool as well uh, that GNOME has, which is pretty pretty good too. So I kind of bounce between the two. And um, I, most of all, I've fallen in love with Ventoy. Uh, Ventoy is what I use. So I just drag and drop ISOs, call it a day, move on. We're good. So. But if I had, you know, if I didn't use uh, the etching tool very much, then I would either do Valena or the actual uh, uh, GNOME image writer tool. But either way, there's a look at that. Then they have the GNOME videos. Obviously, we talked about they've got G-Edit, it looks like. Their document scanner right here, which is their PDF scanner. Um, they have uh, extensions, cheese is your camera. They've got the firewall config already uh, there for you. So you can... Um, set up and configure your firewall oh they've got midnight commander which is nice this is a um terminal a tui uh file manager so you don't necessarily have to use known files this is a little bit more powerful so uh yeah you've got that uh, they've got that already installed like i said it's, this is geared more towards professionalism so you're going to find a much more um professional environment type apps in here like Remena, Shotwell, Sound Recorder. Uh, they've got the Muon Package Manager, which is uh, handles your .deb packages. 
it's like synaptic, but to me, it's a little bit cleaner, of a, less confusing of a, of a actual uh, uh, interface. Like you can click on this and then, you know, mark for installation and, you know, then you can hit apply changes up here instead of being down in the right hand corner. But either way, I mean, it's, it's just like synaptic for the most part. And then on this page here, you have startup applications. You got a startup disk creator, which is, I believe the image writer for GNOME. Yep. This is it. This is their image writer, um, which is nice. And then you have um, transmission is your transmission client. And then of course they've added the to-do list right here. So there's like, like your sticky notes or whatever, uh, which is kind of nice or calendar, you know, events and stuff like that. So, I mean, that, that is pretty, pretty doggone cool. And utilities, you have your um, uh, advanced, of course, network configuration, disk usage analyzer, backups, the image viewer, doc viewer, uh, passwords, you know, manager and, and keys, you know, manager. And then, of course, you've got your characters and your fonts manager. So there is that. Now, under this over here, it's the same thing. It's just all broken down for you to uh, uh, look at and 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 you know get through that way if you're like don't like opening up this thing which to me i guess you can't get ri really get rid of this part because it is um gnome and you're always going to have that between the activities part and this button right here you're always going to have that which to me is not that big a deal but you could always get rid of this and make a dock with your extensions do your dash to dock whatever but anyhow that is a look at free spires it's very nice, it's clean, it's simple, it's set up, it's free. It uses the um, 5.15 kernel, I believe. They're not into the sixes, but a lot of that's because the business environment requires that. Uh, you're, you're not going to use a rolling release or a super up-to-date kernel that still has bug fixes and still has you know hardware that it doesn't really support. You need something that's pretty rock solid in the business world because businesses are not into buying new equipment all the time. They're not buying the latest and greatest desktops. They're actually buying the cheapest Dell desktops that they could find out there and then just throwing on an operating system onto it. Uh, preferably, you know, most of them will buy ones with Windows on it, but, you know, if you're going to use Linspire or you're using that, then, of course, you're going to wipe Windows and throw that on there, but you need it to be able to support that hardware and so that's why they they stick with the older kernels i'm sure either way it's smooth it's fast it's graphically nice it is a business type type one so you're going to find stability and support there as you can see when you went to the web page they actually had forums and support areas for even free spire so a lot of times you get these corporate ones that do like the, 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 the corporate, you know, side of their thing. And they don't really do a lot of support on the free spire. They just, they just put out the free one and just leave it at that, but not, not in this situation. So I definitely, if you guys are a known person, you like Ubuntu and you're definitely wanting stability, then, uh, you know what, why not give free spire a try? I mean, you could add everything to it that you have in your desktop, obviously, uh, through the, muon package manager or the discover which is i thought that was kind of wild they threw that in there so but either way tell me guys what you guys think about it if you haven't tried it try it tell me what you think if you are using it and i just and i landed on one of the desktop environments or the uh, software distros that you're using hey tell me all about it i want to hear it either way don't forget to thumbs up the video subscribe if you haven't subscribed and join if you haven't joined stay blessed keep on linuxing do what you do and have a great day, and I will see you all in the very next video I do.